Hi everyone, it's JJ here and welcome to Be Colorful! In this video we will continue to create cards using the Tonic Craft Kit 38. In the two previous videos I made a gift wallet and six cards. You will find the links to the videos down below in the description box and at the end of this video. I also remind you that in the description box and on my blog you will find the list of all the products that I'll use in this video. Now let's start with the card number 7. For this card I'm gonna propose you a see-through shaker card. Compared to a normal shaker card, in this uh, it will be possible to see the inside of the card through the window of the shaker element. In this case I'm going to use these uh, three dies of the kit, arranging them exactly in this way. So I'm going to create a panel that is uh, three and three quarter by five and a half inches on white cardstock. I'm going to place the three dies on the panel using a T ruler to position them straight and fixing them with masking tape. Then I'm going to die cut with my big shot machine using the precision plate by C6. That's because the dies have an intricate design. In this way I will be sure to get a complete die cut. The central window will be the shaker element of my card. So on the back of the panel I'm gonna glue a piece of acetate sheet. And with some foam tape, I'm going to close the area where I will put my shaker element. To keep everything nice and level, I also apply foam tape to the rest of the panel. Before putting the glitter, I'm going to sprinkle the area with an anti-static powder. This way the glitter will not stick to the foam tape borders. So I fill the area with the green glitter contained in the kit. And I glue another piece of acetate, sealing the glitter forever. Then I'm going to remove the protective film from the rest of the foam tape and glue on the back of the two largest windows a background of the cotton paper from the kit. Now I'm going to prepare my card base on white cardstock in a standard size that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Next, with the satin silver paper from the kit, I'm going to cut out the side trim edges for the main panel. So I cut out two strips and glue them on the card base. Before gluing the main panel on the card base, I have to create the opening on the card base that will allow us to see the inside of the card through the shaker window. To create the opening I'm gonna use this die from the kit. I'm going to position the panel next to, to the card base, aligning them nicely. And with the help of uh, the T-ruler, I'm going to position the die in line with the shaker window. 
In this way, I ensure that I'm positioning the die exactly in correspondence with the position it will assume the center window after I glued the panel to the card base. And now I can glue the panel. Now I move on to the sentiment, for which I decided to use two of the dies included in the kit. So I'm going to die cut on silver satin paper and cut out the sentiment forming two strips that I gonna glue on the card base with some foam tape. I finish the card by creating uh, drops of Joel Drop Limoncello included in the kit at the end of the sentiment. The card number 8 will be another interactive card. In fact, I'm gonna create uh, with the main die of the kit a gatefold element. So I'm gonna make the two flaps uh, out of white cardstock. And I'm going to chop off the part that I don't need, leaving a small flap of paper beyond the fold line created by the die. In this way, I will be able to assemble my gatefold element. Then I'm gonna make the panel that will be the inside of my gatefold element. I cut out the corners of the flaps and fold following the fold lines uh, impressed by the die. Now let's move on to assemble and decorate this element. For the sentiment, first of all, I'm gonna make a panel on silver satin paper with this die of the kit, on which I'm going to die It's Your Birthday. On the cotton paper I'm going to die cut the covers of the flaps. And I also use this paper to create uh, the background for the sentiment. So I proceed to assemble everything. I'm going to glue the flaps uh, to the base. as well as the covers on the outside of the flaps. Now I'm gonna create the closure of the gatefold element using these two satin silver brads. To insert them easily I'm going to make two small holes with a precision knife. So I'm going to insert the brat inside them. 
but before opening uh, their legs, I'm going to insert this white and grey twine. To secure it, I make a simple knot. After that, I can open the legs. So I have created the locking system of the gatefold element. Now to cover the back of the brad, I'm going to die cut two more panels with this die, again using the cotton paper from the kit. I'm going to stick the covers with some liquid glue. as well as the background of the sentiment. To give some dimension and depth, I'm going to glue the sentiment with some foam tape. Ok, now, if you prefer, this uh, gatefold element could stay that way, then uh, be used as a mini gatefold card, perhaps uh, finishing uh, the back uh, with another panel, but uh, I have decided uh, that uh, it will be the focal point of my interactive card. So I'm gonna get the card base on white cardstock, in standard size, thus 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half. To embellish the background, keeping it quite subtle, I'm going to use an embossing folder, in particular this one by CZX, which was included in my Big Shot Starter Kit when I bought it. So I'm going to insert the front side of the card base in the middle of the embossing folder. Then, following the instructions of my die cut machine, for uh, the embossing uh, with the embossing folder, I'm going to open the base plate in the red side, marked with uh, 1. To bring out the embossing, I'm going to apply a light coat of grey ink with this blending brush. This type of brushes, compared to sponges, allow you to apply very soft layers of colour, which is what I want to achieve in this case. Now I can glue my interactive focal point in the center of the card base. I close it by making a bow with the twine. Finally, just because I like to use Nouveau Drops, on each dot created by the embossing folder, I'm going to apply a drop of Jewel Drop Limoncello. And the card is finished. And here we are come at the nine and last card that uh, I propose you for the Tony Craft Kit 38. This will be a slimline card. This is my first time doing one, 
but uh, I'd like to use this format because uh, I plan uh, to create elements that uh, require uh, a lot of space. So I'm creating a slimline card on white cardstock in standard size, that's 9 by 4 inches. Then I also get the main panel again on white cardstock, but slightly smaller than the card base, that is 3 and 3 quarter by 8 and 3 quarter. And let's move on to creating the decorative element, but let's first step into the past. In the second video we created our DIY stencils with the dice from the kit. In the same video I created many panels with the homemade glitter paste. We also used a lot of stencil techniques, the one with the embossing powder, and the one with the ink pad applied with a blending tool. Well now, let's get to the point. The idea of making a slimline card came to me thinking about these stencils and the techniques we used. I really liked the result and the colors uh, of the mediums I used. So in this card I'd like to include all these uh, things that I loved. Here I have one of the panels created with the unmade glitter paste. I had created quite a lot since uh, I put a lot of glue. So uh, now I'm gonna create a panel with the stencil technique using the embossing powder as a medium. I dab the stencil with a clear embossing uh, ink and sprinkle the embossing powder included in the kit. And I melt it with the heat tool. Then I'm gonna create uh, the third panel with the ink pad from the kit, applying it with a blending brush. After that, I'm going to cut out the panels along the edges of the image. Next to each of them, I'm going to add finishing borders. In particular, for the panel with the glitter paste, I'm gonna use pale green pearlescent paper. The grey ink panel, on the other hand, will have satin silver borders. Finally, for the embossed panel, I'm gonna use the yellow classic card. I'm going to decide more or less what the position will be and I trim off one of the edges of the panels that I will glue on the side of the panel. To bring out these beautiful colors even more, I'm gonna create black finishing borders for the main panel. Now let's move on to the sentiment. With this die from the kit, I'm going to die cut three times on white cardstock. Each of the sentiment will have a different color base. 
one will have a yellow base one will be on a pearlescent green background and one on silver satin paper I chop off the excesses and I'm ready to assemble everything. I'm gonna glue the three panels with liquid glue, helping me with a ruler to position them straight. For the sentiment I'm gonna use foam tape to give dimension to the card. So I just have to glue everything on the card base and add the finishing touches, creating drops with three gel drops of different colors, which perfectly match the colors of the card. My first slim card is finished. And that was the last of nine cards for this Tony Craft Kit 38. I hope my ideas have been useful to you and that you have enjoyed with me creating stencil, glitter paste, interactive cards, gift wallet and nice flowers with the paper piecing technique. Thank you very much for following me, see you at the next video, bye bye and be colorful!